We can all remember what it was like to move from primary to secondary school. One day you feel like a happy and settled shark in the village pond. The next, no one knows your name and you're a goldfish in the Atlantic. This is just one of the many reasons that pupils can suffer from a dip in motivation and attainment in some subjects between Key Stage 2 and 3. Lynn Broadbent is an educational specialist from Brunel University with a particular interest in transition in RE, a subject that suffers more than most from the transition dip. She has been piloting schemes across the country that aim to provide continuity and progression. Today she is visiting St Bartholomew School in South London to see how one of these programmes is progressing. St Bart's has been involved in a transition project that we've run in the London Borough of Lewisham and this project has been running for about three years. At Key Stage 3 there's a nationally known dip both in motivation and in learning. And so we decided, or rather the teachers did, decided that rules and responsibilities would be a good subject for um, the bridging unit here in, in Lewisham. And we'll see how the unit develops into pupils looking at be their beliefs and values and then structuring them into personal statements of belief or creeds, if you like, that they'll take with them from their primary school into their secondary schools. And this is an essential idea of, of progression. Secondary teachers got together and the primary teachers worked outlining what the project might look like for each of those key stages and then we compared the outcomes and adjusted the outcomes uh, to construct the unit which bridged year six and year seven. Sean Burns is RE coordinator at St Bartholomew's. Today he's taking a year six class and he's applying a six-week scheme of work based around rules and creeds in religious and everyday life. He'll take us on a whistle-stop tour of the scheme, and then he and Lynn will discuss some of the issues surrounding our retransition in more detail. If you like what you see in the scheme of work, and want to recreate it with your pupils, you can find it on the Teachers TV website in its entirety. Say hello to Mrs. Paul M. Hello. hello. In the first week of the transition unit, we have a look at rules and responsibilities generally in life. Are all rules written down or are some rules unwritten? And we have a look at um, what consequences are as well of following rules and not following rules. If you remember, in the first part of the unit, we looked at what a rule is, what um, our responsibility is in following different rules and we had lots of key questions which we've got up on the board there that we thought about. Rules that some people have to follow are different from what other people have to follow and that's quite an interesting point that comes out straight away as well. Um, and then look at rules that society are following generally as well or not as the case may be. It addresses the two attainment targets in religious education, the attainment targets which are found in the agreed syllabus, learning about religion and learning from religion. In Attainment Target 2, the learning from religion, they've been able to focus on rules and responsibilities and questions of authority. What rules do we have and whose rules are they? That question of who makes the rules, those questions of authority. But a lot of the work of this project also feeds into work in personal, social and moral education and also citizenship education too. The second part of the transition unit was when we look at the traditional Christian and Jewish creation stories. We may look at it from the Bible and the Torah straight, we may use um, a video and we look at the point when the rules were broken, trying to get the children to identify what rules were being asked to be kept, wh why were they broken, when were they broken and what was the consequence. Try to build into the project a lot of different activities, um, not just writing, though there are some writing opportunities in there, but art, drama, discussion. Hopefully there's something for everyone so that people mm. really feel there's something that taps into their interests mm. and that it really is worthwhile and relevant for, for the children at this stage of their, their lives. Mm. And a lot of the work that we have done has been very focused on developing pupils' thinking skills and capitalising on some of the, uh, the national strategies, for example, the literacy strategy in the primary school, um, in order to develop pupils' understanding of text. 
week three, we move on to um, have another look at the Christian and Jewish creation story, but we'll look at it uh, through a retelling, through a modern myth, um, The Blessing Seed uh, by Caitlin Matthews. In the beginning, God sang everything alive. God sang the sky, the land and the seas. God sang the plants and trees. The man and the woman thanked God. They walked out into the wide world, taking the blessing seed in their hearts. So what you're going to do is I want you to choose one of these four quotes that we've been looking at. And what I want you to do is I want you to think really carefully about what you think that quote means. And I want you to represent it on a piece of paper. So if you go over to your places and then you can start on that. The quotes are on your table and you can choose them from there. You're doing the four paths, Fraser. Yeah. And this is a person wondering which path to go down. Yeah, that's no. The tree. Oh, that's the trail, of course it is, yes. That's good. And the tree's right in the centre, isn't it, with the four paths? On your four paths, are you going to show that this the path of wonder, the path of emptiness? How are you going to show that? I'm going to the path of emptiness, I'm just going to just do it and just colour it in in one colour with nothing else there. What about the path of wonder? How will you show that? So if somebody wondered what was in space or something, you could, like, draw all the planets. Right, so looking beyond into the distance. OK, good. Keep going. Well done. It gives me quite a good insight into individually uh, what they're getting out of that activity and what they're, what they're internalising as they do it, about uh, the rule breaking and about the consequences. But the interesting way that um, this story is done in a slightly different way with, with a forgiving God. I'm drawing about where Eve is listening to the tree of life and it's singing its song of laughter, its song of tears, its song of the beginning of, and its song of the coming home. And then when you look after the earth and the, all the creation, that they support the creation and respect it. Something we're always saying to the children, if you've made a mistake, learn from it and move on. And that's what this version of the creation story is all about. And I think by doing that, it's getting more in touch with the children and it's something they can more identify with in terms of rule breaking and, and learning from those consequences. In week four, we move on to um, the other monotheistic faith uh, to explore, which is Islam, and we look at Islamic ways to behave. Now, I've just been outside and washed my hands because I'm going to touch something. What do you think I'm going to touch? Yeah? The Quran. And where would the Quran be? It's on this. It's right up here. Why is it so high up? Let's bring it down. Why is it so high up, Casey? Is it because, like, God's in heaven and he's high up, so you need to put that high up? It's because Muslims believe it's the word of Allah, don't they? Yeah. And it's very important, the word of Allah. It's kind of rules over the world, so the Quran should be the at the highest point in the room. Right, now in the Quran, there is lots of information about rules and responsibilities. But just before I tell you about the rules and responsibilities, I'm just going to tell you a little story, OK? Mohammed one day was walking along, and as he was going along through Medina, he heard <coughs> this really sad noise. And this sad noise was a real big sobbing. And as he got nearer, he realised it wasn't a person who was sobbing, it was actually an animal. It was a camel. I think the content of this course strengthens the, the multicultural side and the multi-faith side um, that we've got in Lewisham and in, in our schools. And in this transition unit, by looking at rules and responsibilities and actually seeing that the rules and responsibilities of the world and then of the religions actually are quite a lot in common. And I think that's something really interesting for the children to see that hopefully strengthens their understanding of each other. And the man realised that what Muhammad was saying was true and that actually him and the camel were part of Allah's creation and that he should be caring for the camel too. So that story reminds Muslims that actually they should be caring for creation, about rules and responsibilities. And if we look in the Quran, all right, there's lots of information in the Quran about rules and responsibilities for Muslims. Why is the Quran so important to Muslims? Um, Hannah? It sort of leads them through their lives, so it guides, guides them. Right, it leads them through their life. Now, inside the Quran, what do you think it would say about the way people should live? Uh, Shola? I think it should be, t uh, be telling them to live a good life. Stop bad things like happening, like the story you told us about Muhammad and with, with the man in the car, how the man was relaxing and how the camel was in distress. So that's what they're supposed to do, that help people like okay so it would tell them about the important things the way to live yeah. the way to behave okay
what we do in week five is we actually have a look at ways of expressing um, the responsibilities that people feel about um, how they should live their lives and we have a look at creed. What we're going to do in our final part of the transition unit is you are going to write something to do with rules and responsibilities. Some of the ways in which people express their rules and responsibilities are in creeds, aren't they? And we looked at the Christian creed, which was the Apostles' Creed. We look at a number of different secular creeds and uh, see what they're saying about ways of living our life. And then after that, we move on to looking at religious creeds. So we look at, in Christianity, one of their creeds, it might be the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed. Uh, and then we look at the Jewish Statement of Belief, Shema. And then um, after that, we move on to an Islamic Statement of Belief, which is the uh, Shahada. So they were from the different religions, OK, just saying about how they believe people should be behaving, how they feel people should be taking responsibility for living in the world. And what you're going to do today is you're going to write your own creed on the way that you feel it's important for you to behave and the rules and responsibilities that you feel you should follow as a young person going out into the world today. Pupils respond to what they have learnt about religions, about Christianity, about Judaism and Islam, and respond um, from their own perspectives, looking at the rules and responsibilities that they feel strongly about. And that came out very clearly in the work that they did on the creeds and statements of their own belief. After they've written their own creed, there's, there's different ways in which we may present that. Um, the children may uh, produce their own creeds on pieces of card. Another way that we've explored it is where um, we have a, a class creed written out. So from um, all the children's individual creeds, we take a line. It's done in a class creed. It's done on a huge banner. And then after that, the banner's cut up into jigsaw pieces and every child takes away a piece of the jigsaw with them, but they know that the part they've got with them belongs to a greater whole. What's important is that after the children have written their own creed, that they have their copy to take away with them. So when they get to secondary school, um, they'll be coming in with children from other primary schools who've done this transition unit too. And in a way, they've got straight away something in common. And it also gives the secondary school teachers an idea about the children when they've left primary school what kind of level of thinking are they doing in RE? Where, where are they coming from and where are, they, where are we aiming to get them to? So what personal creeds do the pupils come up with? Here's a selection from last year's Year 6. Listen to others and they will listen to you. Treat others as you would want to be too. It's time for a change because God made us good. Don't show your parents up, not even if you can. Love is living, an opportunity not wanting to be wasted. Sorrow is sad, something wanting to be Be scared. the best you can be. Climb the mountains and swim the seas. Dream the impossible and live your dreams. Tell your mother you love her each and every day. Be the best you can be and always expect more from yourself than others. Remember, what goes around comes be around. Be positive at all times. Be fun, be helpful, be sensible, be joyful, be kind and thoughtful and be filled with the light of the sun. Many of the secondary teachers have been astonished at the depth of thinking and forms of expression that primary pupils can use. When we were devising the unit, we were very anxious to actually um, lay it down in a lot of detail for teachers. What has been very interesting is that teachers themselves who've been involved with the project have been going to other schools and saying, we're working on this project. Would you like us to come and explain to you how it works? They find it a very positive move for working in the classroom and they want other teachers to work on it as well.